Hello, and welcome to worship at St. Mark Lutheran Church. We are so glad to gather to this day to praise God, to hear God's word among us, and to connect to one another through prayer and God's presence. This season of the season after Pentecost, we are focusing our attention in the green and growing season on Christian life, on the ways that we live as Christians and what that means for us. Today we'll be talking about how it means laying our burdens down and taking on the yoke of Christ. A special welcome to those of you who are guests among us. We're so glad you're here to worship with us. We love this community of Christ and we want you to be a part of it. We invite you to visit our website, www.stmarkmp.org, or to call us at 847-253-0631 and contact me, Pastor Christy, so that I can get to know you and help you get to know this community of St. Mark more. I hope you all had a very happy 4th of July. On our YouTube channel, you can see our director of music ministry, Tim Spellbring's musical offering. I hope you enjoy that great gift of patriotic music he has given to the world in honor of the celebration of our country. May it be a reminder to all of us of the freedom we fight for, the freedom we continue to work for, for all people. Friends, some exciting news. We are moving forward with an experiment of how to gather together in person. Starting on July 19th, we will have drive-in worship. It will start at 9 a.m. in the parking lot. You can see our email newsletter, as well as a letter that will be coming to you through the mail with details on how that will go and how you can make your reservations. Know that we'll, have, we'll start out with one service at 9 o'clock, but if that fills up, we'll have another option at 10. I'm so excited to experience experience that and experiment with that with you. Our intern, Vicar Christina Johnson, has graciously offered to host a grief support group uh, that will start July 13th. It will be on six Monday evenings at 7 p.m. It will be over Zoom. If you would like information on that, please see our email newsletter. Our email newsletter can be reached by signing up on our website. We hope that you will connect with us through that. We continue to have Dessert Church on Wednesdays starting at 7. We hope you'll join us over Zoom for those great conversations that connect life and faith. We also are starting our focus on systemic racism and the conversations we need to have around that. We'll begin on Thursday, July 23rd at 7 p.m. We'll focus on the book Death Gap by Dr. David A. Ansel, as well as his TED Talk. We hope you'll join us for that conversation led by Dr. Linda Olson. Thank you all for the ways that you are Christ's community together in this time, for the ways that you care for one another, pray for one another, and give generously to continue the ministry through St. Mark. With those announcements, we prepare our hearts for worship by listening to the prelude.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Let us pray. You are great, O oh God, and greatly to be praised. You have made us for yourself, and our hearts are restless until they rest in you. Grant that we may believe in you, call upon you, know you, and serve you. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Good morning, friends, and welcome to Children's Time. We're outside again. It's just too nice this week. Maybe a little hot, but we got to be outside. It also goes with our theme for today. Now, you won't, it may not make sense right away, but our word for the day and our theme for this week are come, right? And we hear God invite us to come, to come be with God, right? And so here we are outside because this is one of the places where God invites us to come. The Creator, God, created all of this. And this is one of those places where we can always be to see God's fingerprints or to experience God's presence. And so here we are in this lovely little spot in the front of church. So whenever you hear that invitation to come today, then you celebrate that word of the day. Now, not just outside are there, there are invitations to be with God. Now, maybe during the offering you'll hear, you'll hear a time to reflect on, on when your heart or your head or when your skills intersected with the work of the Holy Spirit, right? That was an invitation to come too. So the, just a little teaser, get ready the, for the offering. There's going to be a lot of great invitations in there too. So that's another way, where, place we meet God. We meet Him in the Holy Spirit and those invitations to share our gifts. Right In the Gospel, you'll hear how it is that Jesus invites us to come and that it involves rest. And it involves being near Jesus. And so listen and watch for that. Uh, I hope uh, our word of the day is fun for you, no matter how you choose to, to celebrate it. And also, I hope that invitation to come, you take that up. God is inviting you. And so, friends, enjoy it. Rest. Celebrate outside. Or share your gifts in whatever ways you may. As always, it's a pleasure to celebrate with you. The first reading comes from Romans chapter 7, verses 15 through 25. I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing that I hate. Now, if I do what I do not want, I agree that the law is good, but in fact, it is no longer that I do it, but sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells within me that is in my flesh. I can will what is right, but I cannot do it. For I do not do the good that I want, but the evil I do not want is what I do. Now if I do what I do not want, it is no longer that I do it, but sin that dwells within me. So I find it to be a law that when I want to do what is good, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God in my inmost self. But I see in my members another law at war with the law of my mind, making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. 
wretched person that I am. Who will rescue me from this body of death? Thanks be to God, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. The Word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus spoke to the crowd, saying, To what will I compare this generation? Is it like children sitting in the marketplace and calling to one another? We played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We wailed, and you did not mourn. For John came, neither eating nor drinking, and they say, He has a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, Look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you that are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The Gospel of the Lord. My young son, Thomas, has a game that he loves to play. He piles up all the pillows on the bed in a big stack, and he calls them bricks or rocks. And then he tries to lift that big pile, complete with strenuous sounds of lifting. And it's inevitably too much for him. And he falls backward on the bed, and the bricks fall all over him requiring someone to come and rescue him. The game repeats itself over and over and over again. It seems he is fascinated by this process of trying to lift something that is too heavy, of getting buried beneath those burdens. I wonder, I wonder if you have ever tried to carry something that is too heavy for you. I wonder if you've tried to bear it as long as possible. And I wonder if you know the relief when you've laid it down. One summer, I was a camp counselor at a Lutheran summer camp. And I packed for the whole summer, which is a long time to prepare for. And so I chose a bag that could fit everything. It was about the size of a body bag. And I filled it. The tricky part was that we had to move all of our belongings multiple times a week. On Sunday, we'd go to our new cabin, and then after our students left for the week, our campers left, we would move into our weekend arrangements on Friday. And then on Sunday, we'd move back into a completely different cabin. It took about two weeks before I finally gave up trying to move something that was bigger than I was. I put everything in the trunk of my car and then just took from the trunk what I needed for the week, a burden I was then able to carry. After college, it seems I didn't learn my lesson about bags too big, for I traveled to Italy and France for a three-week trip. My graduation gift from my father was a backpack. And that backpack was great. It had all the bells and whistles. It was the largest one they had, and it towered over me when I put it on. It was too heavy. When I got to the end of that trip, I was just so relieved to be done with that pack, to lay down that burden. These are the stories that came to mind as I was considering that great good news that we hear Jesus speak in our gospel text today. Come to me, all you who are weary and carrying heavy burdens, 
and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. What good news, especially in this time. In many ways, in these days, I feel like college Christy, with too big of bags, trying to carry it all. In many ways, I feel like my son Thomas, buried by the heavy load that the world seems to be calling us to carry in these days. We carry the burden of the concerns about how to keep ourselves and our families and our neighbors and the world safe in the midst of this pandemic. We carry the burden of racism and how to dismantle it. We carry the burden of illness or loneliness or grief or sorrow. We carry the burden of a world changed without knowing what might come next. Sometimes it feels like I've strapped on that backpack again that was too big for me, that weighs too much, that is too cumbersome, as I try to bury the entire weight of the world. I want, I need to lay the burdens down and instead pick up the yoke of Jesus, the yoke that God calls me, that God calls us to. Which is not to say that caring for ourselves or our families or our neighbors in the midst of this pandemic is not part of God's yoke. And that's not to say that caring for the world's problems is not part of God's yoke. And that's not to say that dismantling racism is not the very yoke that God places upon us. These are the things God calls us to, but there's something different about the yoke of those things that's placed on us once we've laid the heavy burdens we're trying to carry at the feet of Jesus. What is that difference? Well, it seems to me that the difference is realizing that God is at work to do those very things we find so heavy and hard to carry that God is at work helping us love ourselves and our neighbor and bring health for all, that God is at work bringing God's vision to the world and bringing it into fruition, that God is at work to end racism in our world and in our hearts. God is at work in these things. God is the one who bears the weight of those things. God bears the weight of the world, and we are called simply to join into that work, to help, to carry a small part, the part that God calls us to take on. That isn't the whole of it, and it isn't the weight of all of it. We share the weight of all of this with our fellow workers in Christ who bear this same yoke. It's like this team building exercise I did one time, where each person put their hand underneath another person who had been lying on their back. And together they did what none of us could do on our own. We lifted that person with one hand each under the direction of a leader. In the same way, under the direction of God's leadership, we can bear these burdens if we do that work together. If we first lay the burdens we think we're carrying all by ourselves at the feet of Jesus and recognize God as the leader who calls us and gives us the work and the yoke to take on with our neighbor. The first step is to lay our burdens down, to accept the rest that God offers, and to recognize God is at work in those burdens without us, but calls us to them. And then we listen, 
and we feel the yoke that God puts on our shoulders, what weight we are able to bear, knowing, as God promises, it will be easy and light, that it's not the weight of the whole world, but the weight of the part of it all that God calls us to take on. Friends, I want us to experience this laying down our burdens and recognizing God at work and listening for the yoke and feeling the yoke that God puts on us. I want us to prayerfully experience that. And so I'm going to invite you to join me at the foot of the altar. Friends, here we are at the foot of the altar that rests at the foot of the cross here in our sanctuary. And we remember God's call to lay down our burdens and to take on God's yoke. And so we consider those burdens. And as we place this rock, we remember those burdens of how to live in this time of pandemic to care for ourselves, for our families, for our neighbors, for the world. And we lay that heavy burden at the foot of the cross, at the base of the altar. And this rock, we feel the burdens of racism in all the systems in our country and in our hearts. And we lay that down, that heavy burden at the foot of the cross. And we hold the burden of the sorrow we experience, the changed world, the ways we can't gather, the ways we wish we could gather, the ways we hope to gather, and all that may go into that, the fear and longing, the planning, the preparations. And we lay that at the foot of the cross. And then I invite you to think of the things that you carry that only you and God know. And as I place more rocks, assign to each one of those the burdens that you hold. And then, having laid those burdens down, we light a candle. And we place this candle in the midst of those burdens to remind us that God is at work in them. That God's presence is amidst and through those burdens at work. And then we take time to listen. We take time to ask God, God, what yoke do you put on my shoulders? God, what burden do you call me to care for and to lift? 
in the midst of all of these burdens that I have laid down? What part of these can I work with you to succeed at? God's yoke is easy, easy, and God's burden is light. God, what yoke do you place upon us? Let us listen and pray. Amen. Friends, as we pray the creed this week, we do so knowing we pour our hearts out to the creator of the universe. And not just a, a creator who created and left, but a creator that created and is here, continues to be in this place, and continues to create. And not only does the creator continue to create, but invites us to participate in that creation, that co-creation. And so friends, as we pray the creed and pour out our hearts today, we know it is an act of co-creating with the creator of the universe. And so let us pray. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead, and on the third day rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray together in the prayers of intercession. 
called into unity with one another and the whole creation. Let us pray for our shared world. We pray for the church, the whole church, where Christ is represented. Sustain everyone that shares in Christ's love with abundant mercy. Open hearts as we share your word. Embrace us as we struggle to find our common ground. Lift up leaders with powerful and prophetic voices. Free us from stagnant faith. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray for the well-being of creation and all that is intentionally advocating to keep it clean. Protect the air, water, and land from abuse and pollution. Free us from apathy in our care of creation and direct us toward sustainable living. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray for the nations, especially the United States and Canada, as we celebrate our nationhood. Guide leaders in developing just policies and guide difficult conversations. We pray for Dr. Fauci as he presses to speak for world health and awareness with care, compassion, and fervency. Make those, make those that are uncomfortable be supported in change for the greater good of all the world. Free us from patriotism that hinders relationships. Lead us to expansive love for our neighbor. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray for all in need, for all who are tired, feeling despair, sick or oppressed. Especially we pray for those and we lift up those that are having or in need of surgery, and are alone in the hospital. Take their yoke upon you, and ease their pain, and ease their burdens. Give your consolation, and free us all from what keeps us bound. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray for this congregation, St. Mark Lutheran Church in Mount Prospect. We pray for Pastor Christy, Deacon David, for all who lead and guide this congregation, for all that take care of the congregational building, energize the children ministry, volunteers, church administrators, and especially those who maintain the building. Shine in this place that we might notice the ways of your love and how it transform our lives and lead us in proclaiming your radical good news. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy. We give thanks for those that have died in faith, especially those that we lift up now out loud 
or in the silence of our hearts. Welcome them into your eternal rest and comfort us in our grief until we are joined with them in new life. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Receive these prayers, O oh God, and those too deep for words. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. stand at this table, this altar at the foot of which we have laid our burdens, this altar that lands at the foot of the cross. And as we gather at this table, we long for bread and wine, body and blood, to sustain us, enliven us, to inspire us to take up the yoke of Christ and follow him. And yet, we refrain from this meal until that time when we can all gather together and partake of it. But as we do so, we remember that God meets us at every table and in the company of whomever we share our meals, that God is in those places, in those moments, in those meals giving us bread for the journey, food for the wilderness, sustenance to sustain us as we bear the yoke of Christ's call to live in the world, to work for justice, to love our neighbor. And so we invite God's presence at all those meals with this blessing. Be present at our table, Lord. Be here and everywhere adored. These mercies bless and grant that we may strengthen for thy service. May the warmth of the sun bless you. May the light of the rain bless you. May the smell of the dirt bless you. May the renewal of the wind bless you. May the stickiness of marshmallows bless you. May our four-legged friends bless us with their friendship. 
And may the Creator bless you today and every day. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you.